The challenges are we have to re-aggregate viewing. It was a little easier. Now it's a little more difficult. Probably not a bad thing because it means our clients need us that much more. Uh, but it's something that we do for a living. The good news is it's not that they're not consuming television content. They're consuming the same content using alternate delivery mechanisms and alternative devices. So I don't much care if they're getting it via an over-the-air antenna or a cable system or a satellite or via IP to a computer or to a tablet or over Wi-Fi. Whatever works for them works for us. We are device neutral. We don't care. I do care, however, from an industry perspective because the traditional delivery mechanisms uh, over the air, uh, transmission, what we refer to as QAM, which is the standard cable protocol. If you have a cable set-top box by Cablevision or Comcast or Time Warner, that's QAM delivery. Uh, quadruple amplitude modulation. Uh, QAM is by far the most efficient methodology for delivery. The people who designed the internet designed it as a packet switching network. Packet switching is what you do. You literally send individual packets that get validated on the other end. Each package moves through the internet, goes through different nodes, servers, etc., gets to its destination, gets validated, and then the packets get reassembled into the total content. Right? It's terrific if you're designing, if you do packet switching for very, very robust government communications protocols, if you're sending packets of data that have to arrive very, very precisely on the other end. It is probably the worst thing you could do if you were doing video streaming. In fact, when you video stream, you undo many of the things that packet switching was originally designed to do. You undo the validation. You don't use TCP IP. You don't use a lot of the stuff that is core to the web. Because of that, it is incredibly inefficient. When you broadcast something through QAM, it's one to many. You send it out once, everybody receives it. The use of the pipe is incredibly efficient. When you stream something using packet switching, it's not only incredibly inefficient, but it's entirely one-to-one. -one. So you have to keep sending it over and over again to each user. The infrastructure that we have at the moment cannot support that. If demand for that kind of consumption grows, the viewing experience on the consumer side will degrade. You already hear stories about Netflix users, for example, who can't get stuff to download without interminable buffer time. You do know that, for example, Netflix on any given night in prime time consumes roughly 25 percent of all the bandwidth available in the United States. Right? Now, that's only a fraction of 1 percent of users who are sucking up 25 percent of total bandwidth. They're using it at a rate of 400 to 600 x what the average user is consuming. It can bring our total infrastructure to its knees, and that's not a good thing. And it impacts the ways decisions are made by the Comcasts and the Time Warners. It impacts a lot of stuff. It impacts the cost of the services. If you have Comcast or Time Warner or Fios, you get all the data you can eat. Well, one day they, that may not be the case. And then the economics of distribution change drastically. Now, 10 years from today, it's not going to be an issue. IP will be plentiful. Bandwidth will hopefully be plentiful. The investment will have been made, and costs will have come down. But from now till then, we have an evolution that needs to be managed with care so that both the consumer experience the underlying economics and the ecosystem managed to survive.